Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Alsip board meeting. Today is March 18th, 2024. We'll call this meeting order sure. at 7.30 p.m. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Trustee Dalzell? Here. Here. Trustee Juarez Mendoza is absent. Trustee McLaughlin? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Barza? Here. Trustee Pareta? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So um, we'll start with our officer's report, starting with mine. Uh, first, I uh, was at a meeting uh, this afternoon with the uh, one of our councils of government, uh, it's known as uh, Southboro Mayors and Managers, and um, we were supposed to meet with members of the governor's office and IDOT. We did have a meeting with IDOT that was productive, um, but uh, the governor's office issued a statement, and actually it wasn't just to our organization. This went out to all the municipalities today, um, dated today's day, March 18th, 2024, at 5 o'clock this morning. And, uh, Madam Clerk, I'll, I'll give you a copy of this. Okay. I don't have to write Thank all you. down and stuff. But I want to read this into the record. This is in relation to the proposed um, governor wants to get rid of our grocery tax. And um, Governor Pritzker said today that three weeks ago, and this is, I, I, I'm just reading his letter to, to all the mayors. Um, three weeks ago, I proposed my sixth balanced budget for our state. In my budget address, I argued, as I have in the past years, that the people of Illinois deserve relief from recent high inflation, especially every time they shop for groceries. We ought to eliminate the regressive sales tax on groceries and put the money back into the pockets of the working families of Illinois. Making life easier for people by lowering the cost of living is one of the most basic responsibilities of government. The cost of food is high, and the state's government doesn't need to add, that, add it to that burden. Getting rid of the grocery tax should be a bipartisan endeavor championed by every elected official. As you've read in these pages, there are some who are fighting against this tax cut, and their excuse is that local governments need their residents to pay grocery taxes. They, they even have threatened to raise property taxes and cut services if we give everyone some relief at the grocery checkout counter. What grocery tax, what grocery tax cut, I'm sorry, I want to say this right. What grocery tax cut opponents aren't telling you is that local governments in Illinois have seen a dramatic increase in funding from state government and they even, and they can afford rather to even lower your local tax burden. In 2010, the state distributed $3.8 billion to local governments. And in 2023, that number nearly doubled to more than $7 billion. While municipalities claim their funding from the local government distributive fund was cut, the numbers tell a different story. Funding from that government source has doubled from $985 million in 2010 to $1.9 billion today. That's more than twice the rate of inflation. In fact, since I took office in 2019, local governments have seen a windfall of overall support from state government of an additional $1.3 billion a year. Here are some of the ways that we accomplished that. In 2019, the General Assembly and I closed an online tax loophole benefiting mostly out-of-state corporations. Illinois municipalities began receiving an additional $200 million a year in sales tax revenue. That same year, we passed the landmark Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan, and local governments have benefited from $680 million annually to use at their discretion for local transportation projects. When we legalized cannabis, we ensured locals they would see a share of that revenue, now totaling an estimated $100 million a year. We also we are also saving local governments $110 million annually by having the state assume the cost of local bond issuances. Just last year, we increased the percentage of individual income taxes 
that the state government shares with municipalities and counties. On top of that, the state is sending nearly $80 million a year, is sending nearly $80 million a year in video gaming revenue to local governments. The idea that state government is somehow starving township, city, and county governments, as some mayors and county board members now claim, is preposterous. And the General Assembly and I have gone out of our way to increase funding for local governments. One reason we have done this is to encourage locals to ease the burden of high property taxes local governments have imposed on homeowners, renters, and businesses across Illinois. When you add in this $1.7 billion increase in education funding sent to the state, sent from the state to all the schools, rather, since I took office, local taxing bodies should already have been able to lower property taxes. But nearly none have done so. So perhaps if we start by eliminating the grocery tax, we can inspire local governments to do the right thing in other areas too. My goal from day one has been to provide relief wherever possible for Illinois families. It has become clear that the opponents of eliminating the grocery tax do not share that same vision. As they mount a campaign to oppose this tax cut, we should all take note that state government has nearly doubled its funding to local governments in the last 14 years. Yet, most locals have done very little to ease your tax burden. No Illinois governor and General Assembly in modern state history have provided as this much support for local governments. Yet when we suggest eliminating a 1% tax that 37 other states are already done away with, some who rail against taxation now want to keep our most regressive tax in place. I've spent my five years in office fighting to reduce the tax burden on working families, ending the grocery tax is a good opportunity for local governments to join me. Governor J.B. Pritzker. Give an example of how this impacts government at the same time. You know, certainly while the village draws from property tax, it's these service taxes that help us pay bills here as well too. I'm told if we lose the grocery taxes here in an ALSIP, this would be an impact to us of almost $660,000 a year. Some towns nearby uh, is going to impact these folks uh, even it, just as bad, if not worse. Uh, when you look at it, like Bedford Park, for example, they only have 602 residents, yet because of all the malls they have over there and whatnot, they stand to lose $900,000 a year. The city of Chicago, they have 2.7 million people living there. Chicago stands to lose between 60 and $80 million a year. I don't know how they would ever make that money up. You know, where would they find that annually? Uh, nearby here, Countryside's got 6,400 residents. They stand to lose about $700,000 a year. And even like Mokina, they got about the same size town as we do, almost 20,000 residents. They're going to lose 850000 a year. Oak Lawn has 58,000 residents. They stand to lose $2.2 million a year. And Orland Park has got 58,000 residents. They stand to lose about $2.5 million a year as well, too. So, I mean, granted, everyone, depending on where you sit, might think it's, um, you know, this is a feel-good uh, from the, our legislators. At the same time, this board and all the boards across the this, this state are going to be tasked with some really hard decisions coming up. And if we lose $660,000 a year, how do we make that up? So I just want to keep everybody in the loop on that as far as, what's taking place in our, our local governments right now. Uh, next on my report, I uh, want to just report, I just spoke with our engineer, Jeff Agin, and we are on pace to submit our CDBG grant uh, application this week. It's due by the end of the week. Uh, this is a community development block grant. Jeff, I'm saying that right, right? And uh, we're asking for monies to help resurface Karlov and Kaminsky streets Jeff, are we talking like 115th to 120th Street? Okay. And um, first on my report this evening, we have a, um, an approval to have two village-wide garage sales this year during the spring uh, from May 10th, 11th, and 12th, from 8 in the morning until 5 at night. 
and then we always do one in the fall and from in September on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. There will be no permits required for these garage sales, no sign-up sheets, no GPS mapping. Participants may put up their own signs and have them removed on Sunday after the 5 p.m. closing. Uh, typically, ladies and gentlemen, trustees, we usually do this once a year, but my assistant Becky has been getting a lot of calls asking if we can do one at the beginning of the season, one after. So I'm sorry we didn't have this at um, discussion in committee. I don't know how much. I, I certainly am willing to take any questions now. Anybody have any issues with this? Doing it twice a year? I, I am a, a big fan of the fall one. I could do my Christmas shopping. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> It's going to be a banner year, ladies and gentlemen, at the Murphy household. Oh, I got a water bed tucked in my garage. You can buy that. We haven't uh, used no, that no. Now, so. <laughs> no used mattresses, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. So, Draw the line there. Yeah, trying to get rid of that stupid thing. So, mm -hmm. um, next was an approval for the mayor to attend annual lobby day uh, meetings in Springfield on April 16th and 17th. A discounted room block was made available through the Southwest Conference of Mayors to save money on hotel stay. So just so everybody's got a number on that, that was actually, they blocked out rooms for all the mayors in that particular council of government at $119 a night. Um, so with tax and everything, it comes out to about $135 a night uh, to stay in um, Springfield. Any questions on that too? Okay. Next, I had an approval of a three-year agreement between CGI Communications and the Village of Alsip to produce and promote a community video program made available for the viewer, for viewer access rather, on different devices via a link to the village, including any um, alternate versions of that same home page. In other words, what they would do is this is replacing a video that we had going out in our hall and on our. TV so you can access through org. My predecessor uh, pr put together before I was in office back in 16, 2015 or 16. They are actually editing that right now uh, to take him out of those videos and stuff yet then too. But they can't look at this for another 12 to 14 weeks. But this is no cost to the village. And what they do is they actually solicit also businesses who want to do the same to promote their businesses and as a host to this video that's of no cost to us. So I certainly just need approval from the board to enter into an agreement, but um, that's, that's how that video was taken care of that's, that we're now showing on our website. Any questions on that? Okay, thank you. Um, that's it from my report. Um, I'd like to, how we, um, I'll, I'll bring it up under public forum, okay? Thank you. So, um, Next, we'll go to the clerk's report. Clerk Harding. Thank you, Mayor. I have the approval of the February 2024 FOIA report, approval of the March 4th, 2024 board meeting minutes, approval of the March 4th, 2024 <coughs> committee of the whole meeting minutes, approval of the February 2024 IDOT motor fuel tax allotment in the amount of $67,790.70, and the presentation and approval of a March 11th, 2022, I'm sorry, 2024 committee meeting minutes. And that is all I had, Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, uh, and uh, number three uh, from the fire committee meeting, there's a <laughs> line 27, uh, just a typo. It's a uh, Y-E-T instead of yes. Okay, I'll fix that. And then on number five, there's line 37. Um, when we talked about amending the, um, writing the MV citation, I, I thought that we, and I'm not sure how we worded it, but um, it says that we, we voted yay. So if it was a motion to deny that, then that was fine. Um, but I thought that we, we did a no vote on amending that ordinance. Let me take a quick look. I the might. count was proper, okay. but it was a, a yes versus a no. Okay, I'll, I'll double check that. Thank I you. could have just wrote that in wrong. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also, um, going back to number three, um, Line 35. Um, it's a, the, where we've got, uh, it says motion, motion by Trustee Blank to adjourn and seconded by Trustee Blank. 
And there's no time. Oh, there. you know what? I copied it. I might have double copied one of them because I copied and pasted. So I'll double check that. Well, I was going to say I have notes. Okay. So um, the yeah, because it wasn't recorded, so I couldn't go back mm -hmm. on it. So I was just. Do you know who it is? I'll just the, write it down. Well, Trustee Murphy just simply closed the meeting because okay. it, it was a committee meeting, and the the time of adjournment was 7:33 p.m. Okay, I'll update that. Okay. So see, Renee, now you have proof. People are reading your minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first, too. Yeah, right? Kind of thing, so. Well, it's hard because that one meeting wasn't recorded, so I just had to go on what I had, like the fire meeting. So some of it probably was wrong. I apologize. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, we have the attorney's report. We have Mike Kanker with this. Mike? No report, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then go to the engineer's report. Jeff Agin. Jeff? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the 116th place, 117th Street Water Main uh, improvement project. The contractor Aries is looking to set up a pre-construction meeting the first week of April, and, um, and they intend to start construction as soon as possible after that. So we're working on the contract books and everything, and insurance making sure that's all in order now. But that'll be coming up in, okay. in April. So they're looking to get going on that. Um, and then the uh, lead service. Um, <laughs> water line inventory. Uh, the next step is we're going to do some exploratory excavation at around uh, 12 uh, different locations um, that will be taking place before the end of the month. And we should have everything all wrapped up if everything goes well and uh, get our survey results submitted to the IEPA prior to the April 15th deadline. Um, and again, to date, there's been no lead services that have been found anywhere uh, within the village. So. No lead service has been found in our village so far? Correct. Very good. Yep. Okay. That's all I got. Yeah, this has been, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a big talk lately. A lot of the, uh, certainly the city of Chicago as well as all the suburbs are trying to um, identify whether or not we have any lead service lines uh, bringing water to your homes, and that's a great report to say that we do not. We actually do allocate over a million dollars a year for water main replacement so it's it's good to hear that it's it's working we don't we don't have that issue right now then too uh jeff real quick how are we financing the um water main replacement 116th place and 17th is that grant money too or is that something we, we're going to finance on our own i believe that's on your own that's us awesome. uh, yeah dan would have a okay very good thank you um next we have the public forum um i'd like to introduce um, Al Kindle, Al's with um, assistant to uh, Tony Parkwinkle's office, Cook County Board President. Al, did you want one of your one of your flyers? I got an extra one here. Do you want this one too? Great. Okay. I handed these out to the board before we get started tonight, Al. Too. I, this is the only one I saw that came through. Was this one here? Okay. Good evening. My name is Al Kendall, I'm special assistant with Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. And I visit a lot of your municipal governments and your uh, municipal leaders across uh, Cook County. And one of the things I wanted to make sure to draw your attention to was we have a woman's uh, veterans town hall meeting. It's going to be on the 30th, Saturday the 30th. The uh, city has the flyer. If you see me after this, I can also send you the link to the flyer. You don't have to be a veteran to attend or to participate, but I want to make sure that people know that we have the first ever woman that is in charge of our Bureau of Veteran Affairs. She was a special forces woman, so, uh, or airman, whatever the proper terminology is. But, you know, we really try to make sure that we have veterans to get a chance to participate in our resources and our services that we have. Because we do have a computer training program a certified veteran in micro office uh, software and, uh, and training. So there's a lot of resources. We want to make sure, I'm not sure we're getting that out to everyone. So therefore, I come around and try to make sure that we share this information personally. The other is, uh, and I have the link for those who want to get it directly, we have what's called a uh, once in a lifetime opportunity for uh, money that's going to become available for faith-based agencies, um, federal qualified um, community service centers, ins public institutions, uh, high schools, elementary schools, district schools. 
through the ARPA funding, there's $44 million called for funding. We will never again likely to see this amount of money available to us here in the county like this. So we got $44 million of call for projects, and those that are interested have an opportunity to apply for the money. So you want to be creative, you know, figure out ways to collaborate with individuals, churches, or collaborate with your local school council districts to uh, submit your proposal. So don't let your creativity stop you. This is your opportunity. We provided by our offer grants. It's for uh, 26 months. You call the, uh, your application has to be in by April the 17th. <coughs> this coming Wednesday, they have a capacity building training workshop. So we built in virtual workshops that can help you to prepare your proposal. We go over budgeting, we go over grants, we go over how you collaborate together in order to help you to present your proposal. So we're not just putting it out there and just only letting the big organizations apply. We're trying to be wide ranging and offer this opportunity. And I wanted to come here personally to make sure that you knew that Category President uh, Preckwinkle and uh, Monica Gordon, who is your uh, commissioner, are making this opportunity available. I believe it's on your website. If I look, if not, I will send the link for you and anyone tonight want to see me, I'll provide you the link as well. Uh, absolutely, Mr. Kendall. If you can send that over, we'll have it put on our website and our social media tomorrow and stuff then too, okay? Wonderful. Sure. And, um, yeah, well, thanks for coming out tonight and stuff then too. Mr. Kendall um, had me out uh, um, last season. That was actually earlier this season when we, when we um, that was really a nice event over at, where were we, um, Mount Olive Cemetery? When we did the burial for uh, indigent folks that maybe didn't have family available, and it was that was a pleasure being there. I mean, I've never had done something like that before, but uh, we actually paid respects to over 220 people uh, that were buried at Mount Olive Cemetery that um, didn't have family, or maybe some didn't have the means to bury them. And it was nice the county takes care of that and stuff here too. Yeah, so I mean, it, it never started until the president came in. She just felt it in her heart that it was a necessity to do that. And you offered to uh, local ministers. And so now while I'm here, I know you got a number of churches that I was driving through the neighborhood. I'd like to invite those ministers to come next year to, uh, to participate in the incident burial service. Mm -hmm. And this time we'll get started a little earlier in recruitment and getting the information out. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming out, too, and, uh, Mr. Kennel. Have a great night then, too. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, anybody else wish to address the board tonight? Mr. Smoot? I saw you at the parade, Dan. <laughs> Oh, no, he's coming on out. He wasn't hardly out of there. So. Right. 
you know, what can you know what can citizens do? Well, going back, to, certainly, I think we were all raised, you know, not to even steal a pack of gum, you know, and um, simply put, uh, you make a great point about the, even at the the checkouts. It was in the newspaper last Friday that stores like Target and Walmart and a few others are already going to start changing almost immediately. They're switching their business model to say that even on those self-checkout lanes, mm -hmm. they're going back to only 10 items because they're saying that they can't sustain the losses anymore. It started off with all good, good pressure to kind of keep down on staff and long lines and stuff like that. And they said folks there are between 25 and 44 years old wanted things to happen faster, you know, because they got such busy lifestyles and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But the stores can't afford to assume the, the, they can't sustain the losses. So, yeah, Dan, you make a great point. And unfortunately, this might slow us down again, trying to go to the stores and do what we need to do. But at the same time, I think they get a better control over, over their losses then, too. I don't want to get too much into the state's attorney thing, but you're right. You know, you got to have people that are willing to um, do the right thing. And the police department's certainly kind of on that as well, too. They, these people work, are, you know, the officers work very hard to um, protect the communities and stuff then, too. And at the end of the day, like you said, you're at, you're, you're at the, um, I don't want to use the word mercy. Uh, you're, you're, but, but you are, you, you know, you, you are in a position where you have to accept uh, a decision uh, rendered by the state's attorney's office. So hopefully, uh, regardless of who gets elected, hopefully they, they support the efforts on uh, law enforcement to see what happens there. That's all. Yeah. But thank you. Thanks for your comments. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll move forward with the rest of the reports. We'll go to the standing committee reports, starting with finance and IT. Trustee McLaurin. Thank you, Mayor. First, I have a request for approval of a list of payroll dated March 8, 2024, totaling $474,453.02. Next, I have a request for approval of a list of accounts payable dated March 18, 2024. From the recap, general fund $92,557.58. Road and Bridge, $20,121.95. Storm Sewer, $1,075.51. Liability and Workers' Comp Insurance, $44,192 even. Health Insurance, $475,475.44. Water and Sewer, $924,279.50. Sanitary sewers, $1,872.57. Heritage complexes, $67,712.67. Retiree health insurance, $851.66. For a grand total, all funds of $1,648,656.85. And then finally, I have a request to extend the Village of Alsip's engagement with GovHR for one additional month to cover us through April 30th of 2024. And that's all I have at this time, Mayor. And they do have a couple of um, interviews scheduled this week, too, for staff accountants. So I don't <laughs> exactly. I'm hoping for good things. And again, um, to the students in the room, too, just so you understand what, she's, what she, the trustee said about number two, with a grand total of like $1.6 million, that's how much money we're paying out in bills um, this week. Uh, two, uh, every two weeks we, we two, pay bills. Yeah, that's, that's the scary part is it's every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Next, uh, uh, the fire committee report, Trustee Murphy. Thank you, Mayor. I have the approval for amending Chapter 9, Article 3, Section 9 through 36, Fire Prevention, in motion to approve changing the International Fire Code, NFPA 101, and NFPA 24 to the 2021 standard. Yeah, excuse me, the trustee. Sorry to interrupt, Chief. I didn't have that. I didn't have the actual ordinance changes on the agenda because I was waiting for you to okay it on Friday, and I never. Yeah, saw I, I, I was texting back and forth with, or emailing back and forth with is Mike. That, the only ones I saw. Is that in the agenda here then? Because I didn't put it in. I don't know. I'm looking real quick. I, here I did. Packet. I know when I sent it to Brittany. But I didn't, I didn't get anything from you, just from uh, Mike. Mike and I were going back and forth with it. Let me just double check here real quick. I'm in the fire right now. No, I said the actual ordinance. No, it, the, the, the ordinance is not here. No. So I, I'd like to ask if we can if we can approve this in two weeks. 
and come back. Uh, only reason being, Chief, I, like I said, I didn't even have a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. And I was well, I did rather, but I was waiting for you to tweak it. But you never got back to me. I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't see an email from you about it. Mike's okay. the only one I got something back from. So I don't believe is this even on the um, consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Trustee Murphy, I'd ask if you can pull that for two weeks, and we'll get it back on her again for you. Okay. Okay. That's letter L. Yes. Okay. So we'll push. We'll, we'll put that to our next board meeting. Okay. Chief, I didn't have the familiarity that you did with that changes. That's why I didn't really touch it. Usually, I'll take care of these things all the time. But yeah. I was waiting for you to okay. Yeah. Yeah. No okay. problem. Go ahead. Sorry, Trustee. No Go ahead, no Trustee problem. Murphy. Uh, next, I have the presentation and approval of the Fire Prevention Bureau report for February 2023. And uh, finally, I have the presentation and approval of the monthly report from January 1st, 2024 through February 29th, 2024, based on our National Fire Incident Reporting System data. And that's all I have, sir. All right, thank you. Next, we had the... Yeah, I just want to point out the one other thing that looks like is in the packet, but it's not on the agenda is the calendar 2023 report yes so we might want to since it's not on the agenda incorporate that for next time to accept and place on file okay so we're looking for the the calendar 2023 report yeah. is okay. it's in the packet and, and lots of pages in there <laughs> wasn't listed though it's not okay. on the agenda anywhere gotcha so we don't want to miss approving it right Okay. Give me one second. Let me just make a note there. Okay. Very good. Um, Trustee Murphy, anything else? No, sir. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, we'll go to our police and traffic safety, Trustee Delzal. Uh, nothing for this evening's meeting, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Public Work and Boat Launch Committee. Um, I have the approval of the Public Works February 2024 monthly activity report. And next I have the approval to purchase a new replacement dump body for a 2004 Sterling dump truck from Buffalo Trailer Manufacturing. 3120 Lewis Street, Stager, Illinois, in the amount of $19,700 even. And finally, I have Iroquois uh, Paving Company confirmed they have plan on starting resurfacing Costner Avenue from 123rd Street to 127th Street on March 25th. And that's all I have, sir. I'll defer to the engineer, uh, uh, Greg. Uh, Jeff, I'm sorry. Is that still on track for that, for the March 25th? Yes, that was just confirmed uh, from them in the last week. Okay. And that's, and we got that, I know that's a grant that's paying for that. And so, I mean, it's a Correct. Federal matching. Correct. STP funds. It's an 80-20, 80% federal, 20% local. And that's STP again is um, surface, transportation. surface Transportation Program. Right. Very good. I know, so many uh, <laughs> acronyms. <laughs> acronyms, thank you. Next, we have the sewer and water report, Trustee Navas Barza. Thank you, Mayor. I have no items to be voted on this evening. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to our building and health report, Trustee Prada. Thank you, Mayor. I have a request for approval of the Health Department February 2024 monthly activity report. Next, I have a request for approval of the building department February 2024 monthly activity report. And that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you. We'll go with, and uh, next we'll go to the Human Resource and Insurance Committee, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, Mayor. Okay. Trustee, I did get an email today, and I'll share it with you and your committee tomorrow, but we do have a meeting next, uh, um, actually it's this Wednesday. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, ins uh, we're going to talk about with IP the next um, renewal for the um, workman comp insurance. So Tom Wiedemann from Alliant is coming in to talk to us about that. 
Uh, I'm going to meet. I'll be in the meeting with um, HR Manager Fasano. Great. Okay. Next, we have the uh, Special Committee reports, Economic Development, Trustee Nava Sparza. Thank you, Mayor. I have no items to be voted on this evening. Okay. Thank you. Um, I did see Trustee, I was, uh, Roger, I tell you, they're throwing up those walls so fast over that Opus development. That's amazing. You know, I mean, Opus. yeah, I mean, I was over there just like two weeks ago, and I took a picture of the crane setting the walls on the first one. I was running some errands over the weekend, coming down the Tri-State, and there's the second building mm -hmm. up already and stuff here, too. That's amazing how fast they put that thing up. It's all 200, like roughly 190,000 square foot buildings. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, really, the, the semis have to be just flying up with the cranes out there and all that kind of thing, yeah, too. Yeah. Now, still for the roof, too, they got all, they were doing all that all at the same time. They're putting up the roofs right now, too? Okay. I mean, these are, are like basically football fields that they're putting up indoor, that kind of thing, yeah, too. So, all right. Um, next, we'll go to our village property report. Trustee McLaurin. Thank you, Mayor. First, I have a request for approval to award the bid to Olson Roofing um, for the roof replacement at the at Public Works. Um, and this is in the amount of $410,700. And then next, I also have the presentation and approval of the Heritage Monthly Activity Report. And that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And again, for the students, the Heritage Apartments, um, the village owns two uh, 55 and older complexes. Mm -hmm. We've got 30 buildings, 515 apartments for folks 55 years of age and older to live there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're just in great condition and so forth there, too. But um, Raj, uh, where are we at with vacancy over there right now? So there's four vacancies out, out of 515 apartments. Yeah, 512? 12, 512. Uh, thank you. Okay. Mayor? Yes. Did we get clarification on that bid? Um, we did. We, did with the we, we deferred to um, attorney uh, Joe Kankar, and Joe said that uh, because uh, although there was a lower bid than Olson's bid, Roger said, uh, Roger, if you, can you grab a mic, please, and give your explanation, you know, what, what the problem is with the uh, bid that was accepted? Or, I'm sorry, not accepted, but submitted mm -hmm. on, the, on the lower the, one. Through the background that I did on it, um, there was some discrepancies in the uh, business. There was some gaps in, in their 15-year tenure uh, from 2012 to current. Um, they stated that there was 15 years that they've been in business um, and let me pull my paperwork so we've disqualified him correct okay yeah because part of it is i mean and there's is it 15 or 30 years on the warranty for the roof we would receive a 30-year uh, warranty through olson and so part of it is we need to make sure that it's a company that will be in it's business a company that's for the stand length of <laughs> the warranty. Just, it, it was a bid so under yep. a bid, we're stuck with the lowest qualified bidder. Lowest qualified. So if they're right. not qualified, then <laughs> I'm good with it. That's yeah, and as you said, Trustee Dozo, we, we, um building commissioner disqualified the lower bidder. That is correct. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What's next? Ordinance legislation, Trustee Prada. No agenda this evening, Mayor. Okay. And then we'll go to planning and zoning and licenses committee. Thank you, ma'am. I have a request for approval of a list of licenses dated February 26th, 2024 through March 8th of 2024. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, under presentations, petitions, and communications, I want to put a couple of reminders out there that the um, we're going to host a student government night on April 15th at 7.30 p.m. And we've invited... Um, We've, my assistant Becky reached out to the, the high schools, and we've uh, that night we do it every year. We have students sit in as mayor, trustees, and clerk uh, for a meeting. And we're going to do that on April 15th uh, this year at 7:30 p.m. Students arrive at 6:30 p.m. We're going to have pizza and go through the agendas for the evening, and then we'll get together with our meeting after that. Trustees, if you would please maybe work on some pieces that you want to have um, the students that are representing your desk that day um, speak to and stuff then too. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. 
Next, you know, we the village is sponsoring a spring flower sale. That's going to take place May 10th and 11th, and um, that information is available online as well. We're going to make um, hanging baskets, geraniums, and so forth um, available for sale here. And then certainly we're looking for volunteers on Saturday, May 11th, uh, from 9 and in the morning till noon. Every year we do this uh, with a village-wide cleanup day. And uh, we look for anybody that volunteers, anybody that may need to put in some community cleanup hours for any kind of projects you might be doing. And um, this is always, a, I, I've been doing this uh, since 2017 when I was first elected here, but I've, I live uh, near the Cicero Avenue Bridge. I've made a, a point of cleaning the Cicero Avenue Bridge every year. And somebody always gets the trophy anyway. You know, I don't know who the <laughs> nitwit is that throws a dirty diaper out the window, but we find one out there every year and stuff then too, you know. Didn't you find a $20 bill in one of them one time? I, I sure did. You know, the first year we were out there cleaning up, I was out there with the um, the electricians, I think, and we were cleaning up right where you come off the ramp at Cicero, um, and right near off of 294. I walked up my bag, looked down, there's a $20 bill laying there. I'm like, man, my dad always said money does not fall up. You know, you look down, <laughs> there's money all over. And I still got that 20 It's got mud on it. It's in my glove box and stuff. That was mine. Yeah, that was yours. <laughs> you should roll your windows up. They won't happen, you know. You have to peel it off a dirty diaper? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else have anything they wanted to bring up? We are going to be, um, They. I'm sorry, too, this weekend, too, the 23rd, the um, Chamber of Commerce is hosting a business expo at the junior high this weekend from 930 until 330. And um, there will be participation there. The village is involved right now. we got a grant through um, Invest in Cook. And um, Jeff, what was the other organization? I know we're working with CMAP on this. What was the other one for the bicycle and pedestrian? Was it mostly just Invest in Cook money that we got to do that? Yeah, mostly, yeah. Okay. So. With, uh, Cook County uh, Highway Department also, or Cook County was uh, um, Invest in Cook. They were the agency. Okay. With CMAP so, Mr. Kendall, we, yeah, we, we were fortunate to get an Invest in Cook grant. That's, that's, um, actually covering the cost of us. We have a major survey taking place right now. Uh, the village of Alsip is looking into trying to and introduce more uh, sidewalks on non-jurisdictional streets, like on state roads and county roads, and uh, not to mention uh, bicycle paths. You know, we've got such an, a diver dense populated area, we want to promote more bikes, bicycling as well. So the village of Alsip is kicking off an exciting planning process aimed at Reimagining how we walk and bike around the community. This plan is an all out, all about figuring the best ways, rather, to make sure that everyone can get around safely and enjoyably without relying on your car. Our focus during this planning stage is to listen to what you need and want, ensuring these changes for our village a uh, closer knit, more accessible place for folks of all ages and, and abilities. So they're going to be present at the um, uh, expo this weekend as well, and I got to pick up some flyers tomorrow, so they're going to be out promoting this idea at the expo. And I guess you are aware that Investor Cook deadline is again this coming Friday. We, we are. We, we've got uh, paperwork lined up for that as well, too. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kendall. Uh, no, and I appreciate Al when you send me all the notes and stuff then too. Thanks. Anybody else? All right. Did um, anyone want to remove anything from the consent agenda? Just letter L. We were going to pull that for the next board meeting. For two weeks. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Can I get a motion to establish the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call number one to establish consent agenda. Trustee Dalzell? Yes. Trustee Juarez Mendoza is absent. Trustee McLaughlin? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navasparza? Yes. Trustee Prada? Yes. Motion carries to establish consent agenda. Thank you. Can I get a motion then to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Roll call number two to approve consent agenda. Trustee Dalzell? Yes. Trustee Juarez Mendoza is absent. Trustee McLaughlin? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Navasparza? Yes. Trustee Prada? Yes. Motion carries to approve consent agenda. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any unfinished business they want to talk about? Any new business? None. All right, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you. We're going to adjourn this meeting at 8.15 p.m. Thank you for being with us tonight. And for the students in the room, if you guys need a signature, come on up. We'll sign it off for you then, too, okay? Enjoy your night. Did, did you, you know, maybe you thought I was going to do it.